Hello, everyone, for joining us. We appreciate the time you took to date for this event. It is my distinct pleasure to start our presentation with the final report of the 2020 WBAF Global Survey. After that, we will have remarks made by our executive chairman and also by our president of the Global Startup Committee. At the end of this presentation, we will be happy to answer also any questions you might have. This final report of the WBAF aimed to address expectations of startups and entrepreneurs for the post-pandemic world economy. This survey was initiated by the WBF Global Startup Committee and was distributed from May 9th until May 31st, 2020. At the beginning of our presentation today, I would like to first share a few key survey highlights, which will be followed by a detailed report. We received responses from 81 countries. The top five countries with highest responses were Turkey, India, Singapore, Spain, and the United States. The top five industries affected in this survey were consulting and professional services at 29.2%, information technology at 13.33%, health, healthcare and life sciences at 8.24%, food, food and beverage, agriculture at 7.6%, and finance at 7.45%. 37.92% of our respondents reported that funding, demand, and workforce were the main challenges faced during this pandemic. Funding without additional cash injection was also a major problem. 52.22% of respondents reported they could last only three to six months. It was interesting to note that 39.90% of respondents had a decrease in business valuation and 21.67% of respondents an increase in valuation. The duration of pandemic was also very important. 46.53% of respondents reported that six months to one year, they felt they would bear the impact of this pandemic. 36.14% of our respondents felt that they would need to pivot during this business cycle. 63.5% felt that they would have to pivot during the post-pandemic business cycle. And now we will move towards the more detailed report presentation. 71.37% of respondents were male and 26.67% were female. 21.57% reported that they were in business for less than one year. 18.82% were reporting that they were in business for one to two years, and 59.61% had been in business for more than two years. This is a global overview of all the affected industries that we captured in this survey. As you can notice, consulting and professional services were at 29.2% all the way to electronics at 1.96%. When we try to understand the top three challenges faced by our respondents during this pandemic, we could notice that 28.8% reported financial as the largest pressure during this pandemic, demand and workforce. However, all three combined was reported by 37.93% of our respondents. Of course, concerns regarding the runway without additional cash injection was very important for us to understand. And 22.93% of those who responded felt that they could last less than three months. 56.74 reported that they could last only three to six months, 
and all others felt that they had different uh, periods that they could last anywhere between one year or one year and a half. We also tried to elicit the demand for their startup during this pandemic time. And it was interesting to note that we had, of course, a wide variety of percentages in drop for the demand. However, I would like to point out that also we had 18.72% of respondents reporting an increase in demand. 22.16% of our uh, respondents actually were not able to evaluate. However, just a reminder, this survey was done during the month of May. Uh, we will be looking forward to repeating the survey in a few months, and I believe that these percentages will likely change. Of course, an additional important question was to understand what contingency plans our businesses had. And it was interesting to note that 19.7% had only considered cost reduction, 2.4% were only considering a staff reduction, 27.9 were absolutely thinking about a cost and staff reduction, whereas 22.17% felt that they would have to raise more equity and 19.21% even thought of having to borrow more money from institutions. The duration of the economic downturn, of course, is the question that preoccupies all of us and our respondents in this survey reported that they believed it would last less than six months. Those were 22.28% out of all those that responded. An overwhelming majority of 46.53% felt it would only last six months to a year. 19.8% felt it would last one to two years and 11.39% felt that for their business, the impact of the economic downturn could last even more than two years. We also tried to elicit how important analytics were in facilitating recovery. And it was very interesting to see that for the majority of our respondents, they felt it was either extremely important or very important. We also wanted to understand if our respondents felt there was a need for assistance in facilitating conversations between policymakers and the startup community. 48.77% answered definitely yes, 26.11% answered probably yes, and as you can see, 11.82% were either not decided or felt it was not necessary. We, of course, wanted to also understand if they had already experienced a downturn in investors. And 18.23% of our respondents felt they had, at that time in May, only experienced a downturn in short-term investors, 8.87% in only in long-term investors, whereas 39.41% had experienced a downturn in both long-term and short-term investors. Again, at that time in May, 33.5% were not able to determine yet what type of impact from an investment perspective was on their business pursuit. Given those circumstances, we also asked our respondents to share their plans about pivoting during this business cycle. 40.16% answered definitely yes, 39% very close, answered probably yes, versus the others, as you can see, were either considering it or were not amenable to that. Related to this question, we also wanted to elicit if they were planning to change their business model in order to be more compatible with the post-pandemic economic environment. And an overwhelming majority, 63.6%, reported yes, that they were planning to change their business model. 20% definitely were not considering that, and 17% have not decided yet.
Of course, valuation is crucial for any business owner. And our question tried to address if they believed the valuation of their business had already changed in May. 39.90% reported that it dropped. However, 21.67% actually reported an increase in valuation. 11.33% answered that there was no change. And again, a quite large percentage of 27.9% were not able to determine this question yet. In closing, I would like to highlight the top responses for key categories in our survey. This gives a nice narrative of those that responded to our survey and illustrates some of the tasks we have that lie ahead for us in order to assist our, our businesses. So in this survey, the respondents felt that the industry most heavily affected was consulting, professional services, the duration of the impact that was considered by most respondents as the most likely was one year, also, 39.9% of the decrease in valuation of, of their business as most likely. 39.41% decrease in long and short term investors. And of course, like we mentioned, 37.93% experienced combined challenges in funding, demand, and workforce. Thank you so much for your attention. It is my pleasure now to pass the presentation on to our executive chairman, Mr. Bebar Zaltunta. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ingrid. Uh, I am welcoming uh, everybody uh, to this uh, uh, press conference. I see, I see that we have around uh, 40 uh, journalists and uh, joining the press conference, and we have also 120 uh, guests uh, watching uh, the press conference now as, as our guest. Uh, as you know, World Business Angels Investment Forum uh, is one of the uh, global uh, affiliated partners of G20. And last week, uh, we joined the General Assembly General Meeting uh, of Global Partnership for Financial Inclusion uh, of G20 uh, online. Uh, under the presidency uh, of Saudi Arabia. And uh, my welcome speech will also include uh, some paragraphs from the policy recommendations report that we conveyed to the presidency of Saudi Arabia and G20 leadership uh, as a result of this survey. Because this survey gives knowledge to us, but I think we should understand what like and knowledge uh, this is and how we are going to use this knowledge uh, in uh, setting up our uh, coming uh, policies. Because startups, entrepreneurs, scale-ups, SMEs, innovators have expectations uh, from governments. And they have also have some concerns about uh, their futures. This is what we understand from this report. But just uh, washing hands, keeping social distance, and uh, staying at home uh, will not solve uh, these problems. This is what we believe. So uh, I am welcoming uh, all of you again. And I want to, I want to uh, say that uh, this report, these policy recommendations, uh, we presented to G20 leadership will be circulated to member countries uh, very shortly. And this report will also be sent uh, to your emails uh, the next week. By the way, by the way, uh, the uh, presentation Ingrid has just done uh, will be uh, available uh, on our website and uh, our uh, secretariat uh, will uh, send you a link to download this uh, presentation, also my speech, also Professor Zink's speech, and also country uh, statements. Because uh, we also wanted uh, to share uh, the country statements with you. We invited our high commissioner, senators, and international partners to share what is happening in their countries, uh, in their entrepreneurial ecosystems. 
And what is happening in Africa, what is happening in Europe, what is happening in South America, Latin America. So you will see, you will see uh, different uh, short uh, insights from different uh, continents uh, about the findings of uh, this survey. Before moving to my speech, uh, I want to thank so much to uh, Professor Zink and dear Ingrid uh, Vasily Veltes uh, for their great efforts to uh, gather this knowledge from 81 countries. And I think, I think they will also make another uh, survey uh, in the beginning of next year to see what the progress is between today and that day. Just uh, to give you an idea about Professor Zink, uh, he is one of the founders of the uh, unicorns uh, many years ago, one of the first uh, unicorns of the world. Uh, he is a real entrepreneur and he is now chaining Nanyang University's uh, corporate venture uh, company uh, and uh, initiative. And he was a parliament member of Singapore for, uh, for uh, 20 years. Uh, now he is uh, also uh, chairing uh, the global uh, startup committee uh, of the WBAF. Thank you very much, dear uh, Indarjit, for your for your contributions. Uh, I want to share my uh, screen. I think it will be better to follow together. Uh, I think these these uh, key findings are showing us uh, important uh, details. Uh, we are thinking that smart entrepreneurs will be the winners in post-pandemic economies, which means uh, entrepreneurs are very important, but smart entrepreneurs will be more uh, important for uh, new times because smart entrepreneurs are the ones who will be able to achieve reading the changing behavior of customer. It is very clear that customer behavior will change. Mr. COVID, a shift, made a big revolution in the customer behavior. It, a shift changing it. So any entrepreneur who will be able to read the changing customer behavior earlier than others will have some advantage. This is, this is what we understand from this uh, report. This report is also showing us that business transformation is a must. And today, business transformation is a cure to digital transformation. If you would ask what business transformation uh, means 20 years ago, it wouldn't be a cure to digital transformation. But this is the case uh, today. But the um, uh, question here is, business transformation is not something cheap. And business transformation now is not only a need for big companies. It is also a must even for the smallest company, for the smallest startup venture. But it costs. From the report, we understand that uh, startups can survive with their current financial situation until uh, until the next six months, uh, so they can they can keep their situation like this. Uh, if there is no new in income comes, then uh, the next after after six months we will we will see many startups uh, are disappearing uh, from the startup economy. So the challenge here is how can we invite them these uh, small and medium sized enterprises to finance their business transformation while they, are, uh, they have concerns about their immediate expenses. This is, this is a question that we brought uh, to the attention uh, of member countries uh, of, of G G20. Traditional money is on its way to becoming smart money after COVID-19. Uh, I want to share uh, my, my uh, personal uh, meeting a few weeks ago with the president uh, of the Business Angels Association of the United Arab Emirates, based in Abu Dhabi. He told me uh, they received around 20 new applications to become angel investor, business angel, and become the member of their association. 
And all these new applications are coming from traditional businesses. They are traditional business owners. Why? Because what I understand from here, traditional business owners are trying to discover uh, opportunities in new uh, industries of economy, like early stage equity markets, like startup economy, like uh, scale up uh, economy. He told me that one of them, uh, for example, uh, is the owner uh, of a construction company. The other one is the owner of a travel agent. The other one is the owner uh, of a, a fashion design house. So this means there is a great opportunity now for startups. Liquidity of startup economy will increase. New money is coming to early stage equity markets. Last year, 9.8 billion euro invested by 320,000 angel investors in Europe. And this is 27, uh, 26 billion dollars in the United States. This means these figures will increase in the, uh, in the coming uh, years because traditional money is on its way to becoming smart money. Smart money is know-how plus mentorship plus networking plus finance. This is smart finance, smart money. As a matter of fact, this is what, what um, uh, angel investors, uh, entrepreneurs of today uh, need. Uh, they need more than, more than finance today to compete in global uh, economy. A new career path for young generation, I think looking for a job or looking for a business idea now uh, really uh, are two questions on the table for young generation. If you would ask, invite me, to take the university exam again and study, re-study at the university, uh, I will I uh, prefer, I think, uh, studying at the computer engineering department. Because what we see today is code writing, developing codes are assets, real assets of new startup ventures. Most business ideas, of startup economy are coming from IT, ICT, and mobile economies. 25% of 9.8 billion euro in Europe invested in startups last year went to IT, ICT, and mobile uh, technology-based uh, startups and entrepreneurs. So an important question here is, uh, OK, for example, drones is a good uh, example. Uh, we don't need pilots. And pilots are going to lose their jobs because drones are coming to uh, industry in, in the uh, uh, military uh, area. But new jobs are created. Maintenance, remote control, data analysis, and uh, cybersecurity. So pilots are losing their jobs. but new people are finding new jobs. This is fine. But what about, for example, smart watering systems replacing millions of uneducated people? This is the main question that should come to the attention of uh, G20 leaders, G20 economies, all economies uh, in the world. All economies or governments are now supporting digital revolution, IT development, inviting all startups, entrepreneurs uh, to uh, make more innovation in digital area. But while, of course, uh, creating new jobs for educated people in these industries, uh, what life policies we should produce uh, to to for these uneducated people, especially in agriculture uh, industry. And winners of the COVID-19 are, uh, of course, uh, smart cities, online education, 
healthcare and financial technology related businesses. But on the other hand, there are also some users like co-working spaces, shared cars, hotels, shared bikes, etc. As a matter of fact, shared economy, to tell you the truth, shared economy is, uh, is an uh, area that including WBAF, almost all uh, IT based uh, institutions invited entrepreneurs to create more ideas and invited investors to invest in this uh, er area. But now Mr. COVID changed our idea. Shared economy is now perceived as the as a risky, risky um, economy. And uh, I'm sure the founders of co-working spaces, investors invested in uh, shared cars, hotel industry are um, thinking uh, about the future of their uh, businesses. Okay, these are the comments. We see uh, what is happening, but what are the expectations from governments as a response to COVID-19? Uh, WBAM is thinking that developing smart cities will be uh, very important in post-pandemic economic times. Of course, uh, municipalities and governments should give importance to the uh, uh, data gathered from their own monitoring systems available on an open source platform. But of course, they should also give importance to personal uh, data and identity. Providing computers is very important. As you know, in the last three months, almost all governments in the world started delivering education online. But uh, do we know that, or are we, are we sure that every student has a computer? Every student has a laptop at home. Uh, I want to share a statistic uh, from the United States. Uh, uh, even in the United States today, children from three to 18 years old, 17% of them do not own a desktop computer or, lap or laptop. And 11 million students have no technology tool for online learning. Even in the United States, 11 million students are not able to reach online education. They don't have access to online education. Some families find internet expensive. Some uh, families are not able to afford buy a computer. If this is the case in the United States, then uh, uh, unfortunately every government is not sharing these statistics. So. Uh, this uh, at the end of this uh, report, you will uh, see the uh, reference list. And when you click and when you Google, you will see that only the United States is sharing this uh, information and uh, thanking so much to their, uh, their transparency. This is at least giving us an idea about the urgency of, of uh, some issues. Increasing financial inclusion, uh, WBAF has three important missions. One, gender equality, promoting gender equality. Two, easing access to finance. And three, increasing financial inclusion. So we are in the Committee of Global Partnership for Financial Inclusion uh, in G20. And GPFI, this committee is chaired by Queen Maxima uh, of, the, of the Netherlands. Uh, but today, our statistics at uh, G20 show that there are 2 billion unbanked people in the world today. And we have no idea how they are able to access to health services, how they are able to buy uh, online education uh, products. We have no idea about this. Access to healthcare is also another issue that we have to, we have to uh, consider. Uh, insurance coverage, health services, and timelines of care, these are the three words that all governments should start thinking about. And especially after, uh, uh, after uh, COVID issue, uh, 
health services and health care, even for health industry employees, is very important. So online telehealth uh, concept uh, will be will be uh, more uh, uh, visible in the world, and this will this will also keep. Uh, the uh, uh, health uh, employees more safe uh, uh, while they are serving uh, to public. And of course, increasing citizens' creativity for the social goods. Creative citizenship will be more important than ever in post-pandemic times. Policymakers should consider innovative ways of creating an environment for citizens where they can develop a promising way of thinking about the countless way in which individuals and groups contribute valuable ideas and services and goods to communicate with a common interest. So freedom of speech, human rights, and gender equality, these are the three things that all governments in the world should focus on uh, developing, because this is going to increase the quality of the environment, and that will open the way uh, for uh, increasing citizens' uh, creativity. Okay, but at the end of the day, even you own a computer, even you own a good policy, even you have citizens who want to, who are keen to uh, be digitalized, but what about internet bandwidth? So we are inviting all governments the, as the first item in their agenda to consider increasing the quality of inter internet bandwidth. Five, uh, 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 in April 2020, for example, almost 4.57 uh, uh, billion people, which is the 59% uh, of the world uh, population, uh, is only digitalized. 40% uh, is not able to access the uh, internet. Even the ones who have access to internet, in uh, some cases, they are not happy uh, with the internet speed. So for a, to provide better education and increase financial inclusion and easing access to healthcare and increasing citizens' creativity, internet bandwidth in cooperation with telecom companies is very important. Uh, I think we are uh, going to face we are uh, going to start hearing these three new uh, terminologies uh, after, after COVID. Responsible finance, impact investment, and digital access to finance. We are inviting all governments to consider establishing co-investment funds in cooperation with impact investors. Impact investors and impact investment will be more important in post-pandemic economies. And easing access to finance will also including the considerations about how we can digitally access to finance. I think, I think uh, startup economy uh, is ready uh, to uh, cover these issues because, as I told you, 25% of investment in Europe, for example, went to uh, digital uh, ICT-based um, uh, startups, and uh, startup economy is uh, lucky uh, from this perspective. They will be able to uh, uh, develop uh, creative uh, business ideas uh, to cover uh, the digital access to finance um, issue. Uh, I think we are uh, moving to a very hyper-connected digital world. Even this uh, press conference is a good sample. Uh, our, our, uh, I, I see, just a second, let me, let me check how many people uh, we are now. Uh, yes, uh, we have now 41 journalists uh, uh, from around uh, 25 countries uh, today. And we have 129 uh, audience uh, listening uh, to us. I think this is also showing us how we are uh, uh, able to connect very easily. And I think we have to thank to Mr. COVID uh, because uh, it opened our eyes 
and showed us that we are not too far from uh, each other. Yes, we are closing our social distance in real life, but we are getting closer uh, every day uh, digitally. Uh, so uh, I think I think uh, there is a great opportunity uh, here because this inter uh, connectivity will also uh, serve uh, to a more social, a more humanitarian uh, world. I am thanking you so much for listening to me and uh, giving me this opportunity to share uh, my comments and WBAF's uh, comments. Uh, here is a, a resource list uh, about uh, about. Um, uh numbers that i mentioned and you can uh you will also find this document in a uh, word, uh, word uh, format uh, after this uh, conference uh thank you very much again and i am leaving the floor to ingrid okay yeah thank you babas and i want to thank everyone for joining us today uh you know, you know what we have learned from this uh covid incidents is that uh, the startups are what are going to drive the future economies of the world uh, in the new normal is going to appear once the COVID health issues have been have been settled. And we need everyone to play their part to help us strengthen the startup uh, uh, economies so that we can create the future jobs uh, uh, around the world. And we need this help from everyone, the entrepreneurs, the investors, angel investors, and especially the governments, uh, so that we can strengthen the, uh, the ecosystem. Now, I'm not going to uh, read through the position statement that I've prepared. You can download that uh, from, uh, from the... Uh, the uh, site that we have uh, created, uh, we'll send that. I think we have already sent that to you. I will summarize. Uh, you know what uh, we uh, we have done. Now, when the when the COVID hit us, uh, the startup committee of the WBF felt an urgent need to reach out to our community, the startup community, to understand the impact caused by the COVID nineteen on the startup community, and uh, we wanted to uh, understand what was happening. Uh, so that uh, we can then uh, come up with initiatives that we can help uh, address uh, and to to uh, to help our startup community and the angel investor community, uh, you know, strengthen themselves so that they can survive in this new normal that's that uh, that's coming up, uh, especially this uh, during this downturn. Uh, so I will just uh, briefly talk about a few key things that we found, and Ingrid has, sh has shared the details. Now, financing, as all of us expected has turned out to be the biggest issue that startups are grappling with. Actually, if you look at the data that Ingrid presented, more than 81% of startups will run out of money within the next six months. Some in three to six months, but in six months, almost 81% of startups are going to run out of money. And I'm looking at the Asia Pacific, uh, 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 product, Asia Pacific Productivity Organization data. They did a survey among SMEs, and they found that in uh, three months, 70% of SMEs, all SMEs, not uh, just startups, are going to run out of money. So financing is the number one issue that has come up. Now, of course, demand drop has been uh, a big uh, issue that has been stressing the company, and, and that's causing the financing uh, uh, problem. Uh, now, almost 65% are facing a problem of getting to their investors, whether short-term investors or long-term investors, and Ingrid uh, showed, uh, showed this data. More than 63% of startups surveyed plan to change their business model in the post-pandemic business cycle, pivoting uh, this uh, during during the site during this COVID uh, uh, situation or post-COVID situation. And more than 50% of companies are looking at reducing costs or letting go people. Now that is a big number. Uh, you know the total is more than 50%. Now, after we did our survey, we wanted to see whether you know, are we getting the right information. And so what we did was we looked at many other surveys that, that have been reported globally. Now, the IMF Global Financial Stability Report projects that high market vol volatility, a collapse, and a collapse in risk ex assets to happen. And this is something that is, will then affect the valuation of companies. The World Bank predicts that the global GDP will shrink by 5.2% in 2020. And this is the worst scenario since after World War II. And nearly tripled the contraction compared to what we experienced during the 2008-2009 financial uh, crisis. And a recent OECD report also predicted a massive uh, global unemployment rate. So we are seeing this in the US, but I think we're going to see it uh, across the world. And this is the this unprecedented first time that we are seeing this going across the world. The global financial crisis, the past recession, affected certain parts of the world, 
But today, whether you're in America, Africa, Australia, Singapore, Asia, all of us are seeing almost the same impact of, 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 of the uh, COVID. Now, there are other surveys done by private organizations. Uh, Ernst and Young Global Survey on FDI investment attractiveness for Europe in May 2020 showed a drop of FDI forward bearing investment in Europe, a big drop. Deloitte conducted and published the results of a survey on global human capital, and it showed that only 10% of companies felt that they were ready to address the need for the workforce to be reskilled, to be ready for the post COVID 19 world. Price Waterhouse Cooper survey showed more than 82% of multi territory respondents reported that COVID 19 had a significant impact on their business, especially on productivity loss for their companies. Now, we have done this survey, we have compared our survey data to all these global surveys and findings that have been done, and we found that very useful and good enough for us uh, to address the issues uh, that our startup communities are facing. And post this press conference, the startup committee of the WBF is planning to conduct three webinars to address the issues in financing, in business transformation and pivoting businesses, and also how businesses and startups can manage their business during these turbulent times. And uh, we will also plan over time, like uh, Baibas mentioned earlier, do another survey by the end of this year to see whether have the world been able to address the issues that have been raised through this survey and, uh, and see whether uh, are there any improvements based on the global effort that we have, or have all put in. We'll do this survey to, towards the end of this year and the uh, committee will prepare a report that we will present at the conference that will be held in Istanbul in February uh, next year. Now, what we want to see is the strengthening of the ecosystem in each country. And the startup committee will try to play our part to give ideas and to work with the global ecosystem players to strengthen their ecosystems. But we all know that the ecosystems to be strengthened will need a lot of help and effort from the governments of the different parts of the ecosystem that we that exists around the world. So we ask every one of us in this community, the, the journalists who are present and, the, and everyone in the ecosystem to help us send this message that if you want to create a successful startup economy that's going to create the jobs of the future, uh, we need the ecosystems to be strengthened and all of us can play a part to, to do this. And uh, so I'm looking forward uh, to uh, doing the next survey and uh, to, to, to present this again the next time once we have got the data. Once again, thank you for joining us. And please, uh, all the what I've said, that you uh, can see it in the full report that I've prepared, uh, that you can download and read, and, 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 and please feel free to ask any questions. Thank you for uh, attention. Thank you, Indarjit. Uh, can everybody make please uh, mute their phone? I uh, there are there are, there is some sounds. I think Mr. Suleiman, Mr. Suleiman, Mr. Hamidu, I see that I'm not able to make it from here. Can you please unmute? Uh, mute. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, Ingrid, uh, I want to thank so uh, so much to uh, Professor Zink uh, for these valuable um, uh, statements, and uh, I want to uh, show the uh, country uh, reports. Uh, just uh, to thank also to the contributors of the country statements. Um, as you may know, JCI Junior Chamber International uh, is one of the biggest um, institutions in the world. Uh, trying to easing access to finance for uh, young people. They have 200,000 members in the world, and it is a great pleasure for me and honor for me. I, I was recognized as the eighth global of uh, JCI uh, after, after UN Secretary General uh, Ban Ki-moon. Uh, Ki so JCI also made a uh, uh, statement about the effects uh, of uh, COVID-19 uh, for uh, young uh, generations. Albania, Bahrain, our, our uh, senator in Albania, uh, Enrico Jeco, and uh, he made uh, prepared the document in Albanian uh, language too. Our High Commissioner, uh, Bahrain, uh, Ferial Abdullah Nas, uh, WBAF's uh, uh, Senator for B uh, Belgium, Julia uh, Stark. Uh, 
our international partner in Brazil, uh, Juliana Lopez, uh, chairman of the board of directors of WBF Croatia country office, uh, governor uh, Zeliko Kolar, our uh, senator for Cyprus, Alexandra Lund, our international partner for Greece, Dimitrios Matsakis, he also prepared in English and uh, in Greek. Our uh, international partner for Italy, Valentina Di Mella. Our uh, senator for uh, Jordan, Muhteşem Mimar. Our senator for Lebanon, Fadi Nafah. Our high commissioner uh, for Nigeria and uh, the president of the WBF country office, Hawa Yabani. Our senator for Romania, Bianca Tudor. Our international partner for Serbia, Jelena Plavanski. Our international partner for South Africa, Yolanda Mabuto. Our high commissioner for Spain, Miquel Martin. Our uh, high commissioner um, for Thailand and president of the WBA Thailand country office, Dr. Narong Sirilert Vorakul. Our senator uh, for the United Arab Emirates, Lucy Chow. And our international partner for Zimbabwe, Wasaya, Wasaya, uh, all uh, contributed to the uh, to country statements uh, report, which you will be able to download after, after uh, the press conference. Thank you. Yes, uh, Ingrid, I am leaving the floor to you. Sure. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. <clears throat> Are there any questions from any of the attendees? I only see praises. <laughs> no questions yet. <clears throat> Just a reminder for all of you, if you uh, had any additional questions for the countries, please uh, reach out to our senators and high commissioners. They will be able to provide to you further details for each continent and the unique complexities of each country. So Ingrid, uh, I want to add one more thing. I think we are about to end uh, the press conference. Um, uh, this uh, press conference video link will be sent uh, in one hour uh, to all uh, journals who uh, want to re-watch uh, uh, the video. Uh, and uh, secondly, uh, yesterday, uh, the G20 GPFI put a statement on COVID-19 response. And this is what WBAF signed. It is one page uh, response. And uh, it has been um, voted, uh, voted uh, last week in the General Assembly. And now uh, it is, it is uh, public from yesterday on. So as WBIF, uh, we didn't uh, produce uh, a separate, a separate uh, statement. Uh, we, we signed uh, this, uh, this uh, one page uh, response uh, with other uh, member countries of, of uh, G20. And this will be also uh, available uh, in the link uh, we will send uh, to our um, guest uh, journals. Uh, I think uh, we can uh, wrap up. Uh, we are, uh, since we have no questions, uh, we can uh, also take the questions online uh, uh, from email. Uh, I think we have one question from Mr. Sleiman. Yes, Mr. Suleyman, you can. Do you hear us? You are muted, Mr. Suleyman, we can hear you. I think there is a microphone uh, problem, uh, Mr. Suleyman, because we don't hear you. Maybe you can write the question and we read from the chat box. Uh, 
Uh, we don't hear you. Okay, uh, you can send an email to us and we then uh, we, we, we can answer a letter. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, I think it is time to say goodbye. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, dear uh, Professor Zink. Uh, thank you very much for your efforts, dear Ingrid. Thank you very much for your efforts uh, in this uh, process. Uh, I hope uh, we will be able to uh, create uh, a good impact uh, for uh, world economies uh, by sharing uh, our uh, findings uh, as World Business Angels Investment Forum. We are thinking that uh, debates uh, while creating policies uh, should be centralized on knowledge. So we are giving very importance to knowledge and we will uh, go on uh, discovering the reality uh, of economies and uh, share it uh, with, with uh, G20 leadership, with other uh, country economies, and with uh, public. Thank you very uh, much for joining us. And excuse me. Ah, please. Yes, hello. Uh, I, I just want to know, uh, when will the reports you, you, uh, you published, when will they be uh, announced on the website? The reports uh, you show uh, us. Uh, the, the report I showed to you and everything you showed uh, today will be available just uh, 10 minutes after this meeting. On the website? On the website. And uh, you will receive the link to your WhatsApp. Christina is going to send it to your WhatsApp and also to your email, the link to download. Oh, great. Thank you very much. Please. Thank you. Okay, all the best and let's keep in touch. Thank you very much for joining us today. Bye-bye.